Hey guys, what's up? I'm here to give you guys a recap on a new episode of Tower of God, which is on episode 11, Under Hunt, Wa Underwater Hunt Part 1, apparently it was titled. Anyways, this episode right here had a lot of crazy sh going on, but we also have to it that things are not gonna, things are not going the way it should go, like everything according to plan, because, you know, I mean, ever since, like, um, whatever his name is, um, Young Soon or something? Hun Soon? He apparently has his talk with Ren, and it looks like to me it's all part of certain plans in motion. So if anything else, I'll get to that as I will talk about it, you know? So anyways, this anyways, we had to that Yoru will later on end up talking to that that big fish whatsoever and and ends up leaving 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 right away. The final test that everyone is doing together is called the underwater hunt, you know? We had to it that Bomb and Rachel would become the fish and be hunted by the dolphins. If if they get met by the queen and get spit out in the in the land or something, eaten by it, then pretty much they will pass the test. Or everybody will pass the test if anything. And however, there's a problem. You will have many obstacles in the way along along with goblins and pigs, you know? Barnacle goblins uses giant worms giant worms to get the net dolphins. And if Bomb and Rachel are eaten by the worm, you lose, and you automatically fail. And we have to it that an old enemy of the barnacle goblins and the worms is called the striped earth pig. Unfortunately for the dolphins, if the dolphins see the pigs, they'll flee, they'll fear they'll get eaten and they will flee, and that will cause a lot of problems. So you have to watch out for not just for goblins, but for also pigs. Even though even though the striped earth pig may not seem like much of a threat to the dolphins, if they if they see it, they'll run away like hell, you know? That's how it goes. So in other words, you have to let the dolphins can hunt freely and let Bomb and Yoru, Bomb and Rachel to be eaten by the dolphin queen and be sent on land, you know, that kind of thing. While there are some scenes with Yoru and Rachel or something, or Bomb and Rachel, they're not really very important to me the way I, how I look at it. I mean, they just, they just catching up, having conversations, you know, but Rachel seems neutral, you know, because ever since I think Han Soon talks to Rachel about something, I don't know. But whatever the case may be, um, all you have to do is crush the goblins, the worms, and earth pigs, and just let the dolphins run free and fish free, you know? Of course, we have to it that we have people in position right now with the spear bearers and Chibisu along with the princes of Jihad, you know, and then like um, with the Nanare, which is which she, which the little blondie girl, she apparently is an anima, which apparently involves like controlling divine, divine beasts or animals or something. But at her level, she can't control much. What she has is like um, some kind of creature that's able to like um look at something in a sonar perspective, which is something that Kuhn later on talks with her and finds out about later, you know? But, aside from that, Yuri, we get to see her again, but she's not too important. She just kicks her navigator to the oblivion to go check out something, you know? But, aside from that, we have to that Kuhn does ask Shibisu, the guy in the purple jacket, or park, Parker, Parker jacket, he asks him, why are you helping bomb out, even though you know the risks are really great. He therefore remembers how he has his talk with the old hag or that burglar cat girl is that um, she mentions to him like it's because he's got everything important that was stolen from us before we began climbing the towel, you know? And we have to it that Shibisu out of like a pure um, goodness or maybe just self selflessness, he just doesn't want Bomb lo to lose anything what he has now, you know? And that's it. And we have to it that Data Kancho and Blauragi just vanished, but apparently we get to know why, because it's the bull. And we have to it that the bull ignores Shibisu, realizing that he's gonna go after a dolphin. But, oh yeah, speaking of which, the bull. There's one more mention of another creature called the bull, apparently, and that creature would eat anything in sight, so watch out, you know? But, Shibisu encounters a bull, and he tries to get the bull's attention because he's going after the dolphin, but later on, he decides to stab the guy and runs for his life, and he's, he was about to be eaten, but the two princes of Jihad shows up in the nick of time and decide to play a game with each other, you know? Like, um... And Dorshi decides to tell Jihad, um, Anak, Anak like, um, okay, let's play a game, you and I. Like, if I if I win, I take, you, I take your weapons of 13, you know? But if you win, I'll be your servant for life. How's that sound? 
eventually, like, um, they decide to go, okay, fine. And, of course, they have five minutes each to fight the, the damn bull whatsoever, you know, that kind of thing. But we see to it that everyone seems to be a little impatient, you know, while, like, um, Ren, apparently he already planned everything in motion where the bull ends up running away, you know, that kind of thing. And we have to it that the bull will later on get, um, Endorshi in the grips and shows his true strength whatsoever, etc. While Anak, she ends up meeting with Ren and reveals himself that he is Ren, that he's a Royal Enforcement Division Unit Number 67, you know, and therefore tells Anak Jihad like, um, I am your, I am your enemy, pretty much, and I got you a little something here, and it's a little small necklace that that actually belongs to. Anak's mother and she gets really upset and says give it back and ends up clashing against him you know and unfortunately because she let her emotions run rampant and she's attacking recklessly after being provoked by Ren multiple times or so the way how I look at it because you know this girl has a very nasty te temper problem and that is shown in this episode and because of that she got herself op she left herself wide open and she got pierced through the pierced through the chest, and oh man, that sucked hard. And not only that, Ren, therefore, <clears throat> unfortunately for everyone else, we have two of that Rock and the others, and everyone else, well, with the exception of Sibisu, along with the other princesses of Jihad, they are pretty much seeing the goblins and worms, but apparently they gave away their position, while the one guy literally had to throw his spear because he says his body moves or something, and <laughs> they, had, they had to go on the run because the goblins are chasing them. But... My only question is, do they have to be with the worms in order for them to work? But we'll have to see. But I don't think that's likely the case. But aside from that, um, Endorshi is given a chance by Ren, who apparently knows her that she is the real princess. She's the real jihad princess, you know? And therefore, like, um, gives her the weapon of the Green April to Endorshi and gives her a choice. Kill that imposter over there and make your father proud. How's that sound, you know? And we have two that the episode ends off there, and of course I'm pretty sure part two of the underwater hunt will like, um, continue, but there's only like a um, couple more episodes left, man. I mean, we don't know how this is gonna go, but it's gonna, not gonna possibly end well, but we'll have to see. Anyways, pretty nice episode, looking forward to the next one, and we'll see, I'll see you guys next time, alright? I'm Alpha Zero, people, have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye. Stay safe and healthy, okay? Toot-toot-toot!